Hello, I'm Catherine Parsons. I'm an artist and welcome to the third of my virtual open studio films for 2020. In the first film, it focused on my work with Langdyke Countryside Trust, where I'm artist in residence. And um, I filmed from Torpel Nature Reserve, which is one of their their sites and um, today we're at Swaddy Well which is another Langdyke nature reserve um, and I'll, I'll swing the camera around in a minute so you can see what I'm looking at it's really beautiful the wildflowers are out and um, there's pyramidal orchids and behind me there's wild thyme in flower it's it's beautiful um, in the second film I talked more specifically about how I work in porcelain and why I choose that material quite often to tell the stories that I want to tell. Um, and this time I thought I'd say a bit more about my story, how I ended up working in this way and talking a bit about some of the, um, the museums and the groups of people, the organisations that I've worked with and um, why that's such a, a special thing for me, why that's so close to the heart of my work. I've always been ex interested in experimenting with different materials. So as a child and teenager, I tried out loads of different handcrafts like embroidery and quilling and basket making and jewellery making, just you know, anything that came my way I wanted to try it out and that's carried on. But I came to realise that I, I really wanted to be an artist, that I am an artist um, by a rather sort of roundabout route. As an adult I did a series of um, City and Guilds qualifications in sugar craft and design and I was taught by an inspirational teacher, um, inspirational artist, Prue Pai, who um, she, she saw the potential in me. That, that time was really key to me finding out that I could design things myself, come up with my own ideas. I, it was something that I'd always wanted to do, but nobody had helped me to develop that ability or to, to learn to trust my instincts and my eye and I, I did all sorts of things. I ended up teaching sugar craft qualifications myself, I competed internationally, um, got gold and silver medals, made things like life-size irises out of sugar that were about 40 centimetres long. Um, it was a mad, mad time, it was wonderful. Um, but I, I started to feel something bubbling up inside and um, it took me a while to work out what it was but it was a, a sort of a yearning to work in a slightly different way um, and eventually I realised that it was about the difference between um, more of an art approach and a, a craft approach and it's it's long debated, you know, the difference between the two. All I can say is that it tasted different. It tasted different to me. Um, and then shortly afterwards, I saw this amazing project advertised, um, Fresh Take at Burley, which was a project um, by Art Pop Up, the arts organisation. And um, it, was, it was everything that I knew at that stage that I wanted to do and more. So it was, it was research based, um, it was, there was time to get to know the place and its stories um, and it was working with other people as well um, and I applied and amazingly was accepted. <laughs> I thought that I was leaving behind my work in sugar at that stage but it turned out not to be because they had just discovered that the, the turrets on the roof of Burley House, which are original Tudor stone turrets, were built especially to take your most favoured guests up to enjoy the views of your estate 
and to have a little bit of privacy away from the rest of the household and eat sugar. Um, so in those days it was before the slave plantations and sugar was very very expensive and they had learned how to model it to make these amazing creations that they called subtleties things like um, chess pieces entirely a uh, chessboard entirely made of sugar with all the pieces as well and so um, it really soon became obvious that that I needed to use sugar for my artwork at Burley only it was using sugar in such a different way to how I'd used it before to tell these stories and I I noticed there's there's an old stone staircase the original Tudor stone staircase that runs from the kitchen on the ground floor all the way up the floors to the to the roof so it's the route by which the sugar would have been carried, the sugar sculptures would have been carried up to the roof for the guests to enjoy. And the stone staircase is, has been worn away by all the hundreds of years of shoes. There's just this very subtle dent in the middle of each stair. And so I became interested in just thinking about who walked those stairs. And talking to the guides and reading about Burley, there were two women's stories that, that really stood out for me. Sarah Hoggins was the daughter of a farmer who farmed in a very, very isolated Shropshire hamlet. And when Sarah was in her teens, they had a lodger come and stay, um, John Jones. They fell in love, they got married, but it turned out that John Jones wasn't actually John Jones. He was Henry Cecil and he was due to inherit Burley House and all the estate, which sounds like a Cinderella story. Um, you know, this farmer's daughter falling in love and becoming a countess, but actually it was, it was quite hard for her. It was very hard for her. So I made her a pair of shoes that from the outside would look like what a countess should wear. They're golden and the design on the shoe comes from the design on the golden gates that close across the front door at Burley. But inside the soles of the shoe, where her feet would tread, they're, they're a sugar meadow to comfort her. Um, a meadow full of common flowers where she would perhaps feel a little bit at home compared to these golden place that she was now living in and there were sugar forget-me-nots and um, soft moss and grass and it all made out of sugar. There were daisies because they're a common flower and violets because I, I read in a herbal that violets mixed with sugar comforteth the heart and I thought that's that's what Sarah could have done with some comfort to her heart. So that was that was a, a really pivotal project for me because it was it was the first time I'd worked in that way, and it it very much encapsulates how I still like to work today, having time to research and get to know a place to find the stories that capture my interests and that I think will interest other people as well and then finding materials that and techniques that help to tell those stories and that's why my work is so diverse. I've worked with universities as well, um, things like teaching master classes to their students and also a, a really great project um, a couple of years ago for British Science Week um, if you've seen some of my, my earlier films, you would have seen pictures of some of the, the tiny little sculptures that I made, working with their glass blower, Gail Price, scientific glass blower. There's, there's a video of her work on YouTube and it's, it's well worth watching. It's fascinating. Um, her work's amazing. So in the research for that, I'd been really interested in how um, 
A lot of the different departments at Leicester University use microfungi as part of their research, um, including DNA research. And we created this set of, um, of miniature porcelain and glass and crochet sculptures that were all about the microfungi. And I, I added in the crochet because I'd recently been given um, a work box that, that we believe belonged to my great grandma. And it, it had her thread in it, her crochet thread in it, and incredibly fine crochet needles. And so I used her hook very cautiously. Um, I didn't want to break it and her thread um, because that was about um, the passing on like DNA you, you you're passing on to the next generation and there's like this thread that runs through all our ancestry um, and so there's the thread of the the crochet thread and the passing on of the skills and the techniques as well so that felt to me a way to tell the story about the work at the university. It's getting a little bit windy, so I'm going to move and um, see if I can find somewhere a bit more sheltered for, for the next part of the video. I've come back to my studio, <laughs> it started to rain. Um, so all along I've, I've had people tell me that seeing my work has helped them connect more with nature and, and notice things. Um, a little while ago I had someone tell me that, that she'd seen a photograph I'd posted of a macro photograph of some lichen about two or three years ago and since then she notices lichen whenever she goes out and we all know now I think how important connection with nature is how very positive it is for humans and so it's become important to me as well that as well as telling the stories that I use my art as a, a way to help people connect more with nature so I had the idea of a community art project bringing together lots of different groups from the, the communities that are close to Langdykes Nature Reserves to create a community artwork inspired by the stories from those places. Um, so I approached Sam Rodden who is the inspirational director of Art Pop Up, um, the, the organisation that that created the Fresh Take at Burley project that I, I told you about with the Sugar Shoes. Sam Rodden has been so key to my development as an artist um, and I am hugely grateful for her mentoring and encouragement along the way. So Art Pop Up are experts at running really creative, innovative community arts projects. Um, and I was delighted when, when they said yes, that they, they would take on the, the Langdike project. As, as well as creating my own artwork, some of which I've, I've shown in previous films, I worked with community groups. I worked with over 300 people last summer as I ran workshops for the groups and at festivals. And Every, every single person created a miniature artwork which were, were all strung together to create art bunting for the celebration of Langdyke's anniversary. So it's like art was at the heart of it and gave us a, a reason, a way in to, to share about um, Langdyke and, and its work and the nature reserves. During lockdown, I've continued exploring the, the colours to be found on Langdyke's reserves, only instead of using eco-printing, I've been making 
um, just very, very small quantities of paint from the plants that I find on a particular visit. And then just experimenting with cyanotype to, to capture some of the shapes and the patterns of, of the plants. It, it often comes back to plants for me, not always, but often. I've also, since I can't run my workshops like I would normally at the moment, I've been exploring online options. And if you might be interested in, in something like that, then there's a sign up form on my website for occasional mailing lists or I'll be posting on social media. So, um, I'll keep weaving together stories of places and people and nature, working with organisations and groups who, who are interested in using art as a way of um, hearing and sharing those stories. I, I hope that you've enjoyed hearing a little bit more about um, my story. Um, there's more detail on, on my website, of course, and I blog on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Um, but thank you very much for coming and sharing this time with me. And um, I, I hope that we'll get to meet face to face at a, a workshop or um, an event or open studio one day in the future. Take care and thank you. Thank you for coming.